obviously COVID-19 um, has presented a greater circumstance than I think anyone from my generation has ever known in their lives, but uh, maybe someone such as yourself, as you mentioned, your 25th anniversary uh, at, at your facility today. Congratulations again. Um, Thank you. 25 years in HIV at a time when this was probably the scariest pandemic in the world, correct? Um, and, and we're talking a lot about the parallels that we see with COVID-19. Can you fill us in a little bit about what those parallels look like and lessons learned from the early HIV era that we can apply now? Uh, well, you know, as I've told many of my colleagues, I feel a, a tremendous sense of deja vu uh, as somebody who worked, um, actually, even before I joined Howard Brown, I had been working in the HIV field. So, I, again, uh, I've been around since the beginning, and, uh, you know, there was uh, this population of people who were getting sick and dying, and yet we had no treatments for them, and we really didn't even understand the disease. So here we are in 2020 with this, uh, this disease that kills people that we don't have any treatments for, that we don't really understand the full manifestation, presentation, you know, biology of the virus. Um, we're really dealing in the same situation as we were at the beginning of the HIV epidemic. Uh, we have to try things without really having any treatment, so try everything, um, you know, have nothing, try everything kind of approach, yeah. but with a very reasoned, uh, you know, understanding of why you're doing it. So trying to try to do it in a thoughtful and academic way, but you can't wait three years for randomized controlled trials to move ahead and try to help patients. So that's kind of one aspect. Um, the other aspect that, you know, some people don't recognize, but uh, the fear of dealing with a contagion where you really just don't know how is it transmitted. Um, you know, we're learning as we go. What are the things that help prevent transmission? What are the things that aren't successful in transmit? Uh, preventing transmission. That was very much true at the beginning of the HIV epidemic. Um, and the stigma associated with the disease, which unfortunately is still extremely profound with HIV, uh, much more so than it should be uh, all these years later. But there's still actually a stigma with COVID. Uh, there's a sense of uh, this, this individual somehow did something wrong to get COVID that they weren't careful enough or, um, you know, there was, they didn't care enough about personal protection or some, something like that. Um, and the final thing I would like to say is that as a healthcare provider, even when we don't have treatments, we can alleviate suffering. And that is something that, you know, I think healthcare providers have really rushed to do in this epidemic. And did in the beginning of the HIV epidemic, is that even when you don't have treatments that are working, you can help alleviate suffering. Uh, I'm, I'm so glad you mentioned that too, because it's something that I keep returning to in our discussions about COVID-19 is, um, you know, the, the, it, I kind of have a little fatigue, I guess, from the constant response uh, from the public uh, to a lot of these developments of therapies or uh, this progression of uh, guidances and care, um, bemoaning that there's no vaccine or cure. And, you know, it, it got to a point where I thought about HIV. <laughs> I'm like, we've been dealing with this for 40 years now. We don't have a cure. And yes, we're closer and we've progressed a lot, but as you said, we have, we have the means to treat, we have the means to lessen the severity and make sure people can live better lives. And it seems like we're already at that point in, in COVID, you know, clinical development and research and understanding of what we can do in the immediacy is exactly that. And, and for that reason, that is a silver lining, but people again, keep looking at this great end game without really understanding, I guess, how viral spread works and, and viral severity. So I'm glad you brought that up and I'm just curious if there's anything else. I mean, I mean, this is obviously affecting so many, if not every single spectrum of a person's life, um, you know, the politicization of this and it's just, it's adoption in every facet of news now is, is just yes. crazy. It was HIV at all like that? Oh, there was tremendous political components to it. And, uh, 
you know, I mentioned the other day about this group called ACT UP, and, and one of my younger colleagues said, what the heck was ACT UP? And I, I couldn't believe that they didn't remember ACT UP, but that was a, an HIV, um, it was an organization that was developed to really uh, be a voice for uh, people with HIV to protect them, to, to support them, uh, and to help make sure that they had, um, you know, protections. And in fact, the, the activism that occurred at that time period is really responsible for why we are able to move so quickly in getting new medications approved, getting new vaccines approved. People don't understand that the FDA um, mechanism for approval was completely uh, changed by the need to get these drugs and other treatments out fast for people who were living and dying with HIV. So the pace wasn't fast enough. We were able to get it faster, uh, not fast enough for all the people who we've lost in the time period. But um, that's one thing that COVID I think has had the benefit of is, is the uh, approach to trying to do things faster and faster. Uh, and of course, there's a lot more vested interest in getting COVID solved. And there's a little bit of me that feels um, not a bitterness, but uh, you know, I, I wonder if we had this type of effort at the beginning of the HIV epidemic, if we would have solved the problem by now. Yeah. Uh, tremendous amount of wonderful people and researchers involved in HIV, but it's not the same uh, focus, obviously. And uh, I think a lot of it just ha has to do with the fact that COVID affects um, everybody, but HIV certainly was perceived as not affecting everybody. 